Hey what's up guys welcome to the channel of career zone after the listening audio you just have 10 minutes to transfer your answer to the answer sheet and try to transfer your answer accurately in the answer sheet thank you and please save your marks in the comment box join our whatsapp group to get daily latest updates it's totally free section 1 you will hear a conversation between a man and a lady the man is at the reception of a property consultant's office and the lady is searching for a house to buy You have some time to look at questions 1 to Now listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Good afternoon. Welcome to Dreamland Property Consultants. How can I help you? Hi, I'm Martha Knowles and I'm looking for a house in this city. Okay, I can help you. So, tell me what kind of house you are looking for. Actually, my preference is for a studio. Otherwise, I can go for two bedrooms flat. Okay, we have several options. So, do you want to buy or rent? I am more interested in buying. And do you have any location in mind? I would prefer a quiet place, not a chaos. It won't be easy, but still we have some good options. And what is your budget? Somewhere between $20,000 to $50,000 annually, but not more than that. Okay, and how soon do you want the house? Soon enough, because my office is nearby, so it will be convenient for me. Can you wait till the new month starts? Oh, that will take about 15 days more. Yeah. So, do you want to visit the house? Oh, yes, sure. So, let's see the studio apartment first. Hmm, actually, I was thinking if you could show me the slides of the houses. Yeah, why not? Here you go. Slides are good, and what about the parking area? Some have and some don't have a parking area. Now look at question 6 to 10. As the talk continues, answer questions 6 to 10. Some of the houses are beautiful. Most of these which you like are in the heart of the city where there is a lot of noise and you said you don't want a chaotic area. Oh, okay. And what about this? This looks lovely. This house is in great demand, but the price is out of your budget. I think it will suit your requirement. It will cost you $70,000. So, what do you think? It doesn't sound that bad. Why is this house in demand? Well, the area where the house is situated has a good name and all the facilities are available over here. You could say it's a posh area. What kind of facilities? There is a big shopping complex, sports center, hospital, restaurants, you name it, and you will find it. A lot of people are getting attracted to such areas. So, do the malls also have a movie theater? Yes, of course. And also a new museum is being constructed and an auditorium too. So not a bad option at all. It is an interesting area to live in. Could you please take me to the house so that I can have a look at it? My pleasure. Let's go. That is the end of section 1. You will now have some time to check your answers. Now turn to section 2. Section 
you are going to hear a radio talk in which the presenter is talking about the extinction threat to monkeys and other primates due to habitat loss and hunting. First look at questions 11 to 17. Mankind's closest relatives, the world's monkeys, apes and other primates, are disappearing from the face of the earth, with some literally being eaten into extinction. The first comprehensive review in five years of the world's 634 kinds of primates found that almost 50% are in danger of going extinct. According to the criteria of the IUCN Red List of Threatened Species, Issued at the 22nd International Primatological Society Congress in Edinburgh, Scotland, the report given by the world's foremost primate authorities presented a chilling indictment of the state of primates everywhere. In Asia, more than 70% of primates are classified on the IUCN Red List as vulnerable, endangered or critically endangered, meaning they could disappear forever in the near future. The main threats are habitat destruction, particularly from the burning and clearing of tropical forests that also emits at least 20% of the global greenhouse gases, causing climate change and the hunting of primates for food and the illegal wildlife trade. We've raised concerns for years about primates being in peril, but now we have solid data to show the situation, which is far more severe than we imagined said Russell A. Mittermeier, president of Conservation International CI and the long-time chairman of the IUCN Species Survival Commission's primate specialist group. Tropical forest destruction has always been the main cause, but now it appears that hunting is just as serious a threat in some areas, even where the habitat is still quite intact. In many places, primates are quite literally being eaten to extinction. The review funded by CI, the Margot Marsh Biodiversity Foundation, Disney's Animal Kingdom and the IUCN is part of an unprecedented examination of the state of the world's mammals to be released at the 4th IUCN World Conservation Congress in Barcelona in October. With the input of hundreds of experts worldwide, the Primate Review provides scientific data to show the severe threats facing animals that share virtually all DNA with humans. Now look at questions 18 to 20. As the talk continues, answer questions 18 to 20. In both Vietnam and Cambodia, approximately 90% of primate species are considered at risk of extinction. Populations of gibbons, leaf monkeys, langurs and other species have dwindled due to rampant habitat loss exacerbate by hunting for food and to supply the wildlife trade in traditional Chinese medicine and pets. What is happening in Southeast Asia is terrifying, said Chief Christoph Fee, deputy head of the IUCN Specials Programme. To have a group of animals under such a high level of threat is, quite frankly, unlike anything we have recorded among any other group of species to date. Elsewhere, species from tiny mouse lemurs to massive mountain gorillas face challenges to survive. In Africa, 11 of the 13 kinds of red colobus monkeys assessed were listed as critically endangered or endangered. Two may already be extinct. Bouvier's red colobus has not been seen in 25 years, and no living Miss Waldron's red colobus has been seen by a primatologist since 1978, despite occasional reports that some still survive. 
Among the African species, the great apes such as gorillas and bonobos have always tended to grab the limelight, and even though they are deeply threatened. It is the smaller primates such as the red colobus that would die out first, said IPS President Richard Rangram. As our closest relatives, non-human primates are important to the health of their surrounding ecosystems. Through the dispersal of seeds and other interactions with their environments, primates help support a wide range of plant and animal life in the world's tropical forests. Healthy forests provide vital resources for local human populations and also absorb and store carbon dioxide that causes climate change. Meanwhile, scientists continue to learn more about primates and their role in the world. Since 2000, 53 species of primates previously unknown to science have been described, 40 from Madagascar, 2 from Africa, 3 from Asia and 8 from Central and South America. In 2007, researchers found a long-rumoured population of critically endangered greater bamboo lemurs in a wetland 400 kilometres from the only other known home of the species. In total, the species numbers about 140 individuals in the world. That is the end of section 2. You will now have some time to check your answers. Now turn to section 3. Section 3. In this section, you will listen to an extract of conversation between Will Lech, who is an interviewer, talking to Bill Simmons. Bill Simmons is a super columnist in the famous sports channel ESPN. Now look at questions 21 to 26. Not many people realise that game, the 30 for 30, was originally your idea. How did that happen? It was somewhere in the February to April range of 2007. I'd agreed to terms with ESPN in January 2007, and part of the contract was that I was going to get a lot more involved in the television side, in terms of creating programmes and coming up with ideas for shows. I didn't understand why we had conceded the documentary territory to HBO. We were still making a ton of documentaries, but we were almost making too many. And they were on too many different channels, and there was no way for our viewers to differentiate between what was really good and what was a run-of-the-mill sports century or whatever. So basically, I came up with this idea. I knew our anniversary was coming. It was 30 years in 2009, September. So that made me think, we love celebrating anniversaries, we love pointing the finger at ourselves, getting excited, as that was good. It basically kind of evolved from there. 30 for 30 co-producer Connor Shell took the idea and ran with it, with the indie film model basically having 30 films made by filmmakers. So we started meeting and making lists. Who do we want to be on it, what topics do we want to hit, and so on. This is kind of beauty of that division that people are working on ideas all the time, but because of the realities of ESPN and the realities of where television is going, a lot of those ideas don't get made. I think over the last five or six years, ESPN kind of realised, maybe we're better off showing games. Maybe we're better off not making movies. Maybe we're better off not doing playmakers. So I really didn't think it was going to happen. I thought for sure the plug was going to get pulled. But the guy who runs ESPN, John Skipper, for whatever reason, this just became really important to him. And I think he considers this part of his legacy someday, that this happened on his watch. Every time it seemed like it was going to die, it didn't. Now look at questions 27 to 30.
As the talk continues, answer questions 27 to 30. It just seems someone like anything ESPN would ever do. I think ESPN takes some heat with stuff, and people seem to think that we are more nefarious than maybe we are. People seem to be disappointed in ESPN a lot, and there's a lot of complaining. I think this is a case where all of it is good. I really don't see how anybody could be against any of this. Basically, we spent a lot of money to give all the creative control to other people. We haven't meddled with them, we're not interfering. We've just basically trusted that they would deliver this creative entity. I think there's some pretty good stuff for ESPN. I don't think they would have been able to do that five years ago. Why have they taken this sort of risk? I think the two spots that Skipper thought he could really have a chance to make an impact were with the website and the magazine. Can we beat Sports Illustrated? Can we beat Yahoo? Can we be the number one place for people for sports? And then with documentaries. Why when HBO releases a documentary does it feel like a big deal? That's something we couldn't get our heads round because HBO is not a sports company. It's a movie company. So why do they get this territory and we don't? So then the question became, how do we go about changing that? And now the Boston sports guy is a movie producer. What it's turned into something that's really never been done before. Now we have re-established ourselves, not just with documentaries, but in Hollywood too. ESPN has become this place where everybody who knew about the Playmakers thing, or people who'd heard horror stories, they know we're players now. We've made so many contacts now that whatever kind of projects we want to do next, I think we've legitimised ESPN, and maybe I guess me and Connor as well. We've shown some of the other people that have worked on this project that this can happen. ESPN did this, it spent the money, it's going to promote the living hell out of it. And I think we have a lot more leeway in Hollywood now that we didn't have three years ago. That is the end of section three. You will now have some time to check your answers. Now turn to section 4. Section 4. You will hear an extract from a talk given by the managing director of Disneyland, which is the dream house of every child in the world. The talk is focused on the origin and expansion of Disneyland. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Disneyland Park, originally Disneyland, is the first of two theme parks built at the Disneyland Resort in Anaheim, California, opened on July 17, 1955. It is the only theme park designed and built under the direct supervision of Walt Disney. It was originally the only attraction on the property. Its name was changed to Disneyland Park to distinguish it from the expanding complex in the 1990s. Walt Disney came up with the concept of Disneyland after visiting various amusement parks with his daughters in the 1930s and 1940s. He initially envisioned building a tourist attraction adjacent to his studios in Burbank to entertain fans who wished to visit. However, he soon realised that the proposed site was too small. After hiring a consultant to help him determine an appropriate site for his project, Walt bought a 160-acre site near Anaheim in 1953. Construction began in 1954 and the park was unveiled during a special televised press event on the ABC television network on July 17, 1955. Since its opening, Disneyland has undergone a number of expansions and major renovations, including the addition of the New Orleans Square in 1966, Bear County, now Critter County, in 1972, and Mickey's Toontown in 1993. 
Opened in 2001, Disney California Adventure Park was built on the site of Disneyland's original parking lot. Disneyland has a larger cumulative attendance than any other theme park in the world, with over 650 million guests since it opened. In 2013, the park hosted approximately 16.2 million guests, making it the third most visited park in the world in that calendar year. According to a March 2005 Disney Company report, 65,700 jobs are supported by the Disneyland Resort, including about 20,000 direct Disney employees and 3,800 third-party employees that is an independent contractor of their employees. Disneyland Park consists of eight themed lands and a number of concealed backstage areas and occupies approximately 85 acres. The park opened with Main Street. USA Adventureland, Frontierland, Fantasialand and Tomorrowland in 1957, Holidayland opened to the public with nine acres recreation area including a circus and baseball diamond, but was closed in late 1961. It is often referred to as the lost land of Disneyland. Throughout the park are hidden Mickeys, representations of Mickey Mouse heads inserted subtly into the design of attractions and environmental decor. An elevated beam supports the three-feet narrow gorge Disneyland Railroad that circumnavigates the park. That is the end of practice listening test. You will now have some time to check your answers.